Christian Picture and Television Commission. Um, also on the call, even though he's muted, is David Aquino, who is the location manager for the Hulu series Wu-Tang. Um, the film company had requested to film inside Matson's uh, Matson's bar, but because of unforeseen stuff and also what's going on with the road paving, they've requested to push the dates to um, May 18th for prepping and then actually filming inside Matson's on May 19th. Uh, David Okino could go through all the little particulars, but I wanted everyone to know that the film company has been speaking to all the neighbors in that area, individually talking to everyone, and also making arrangements to keep as much stuff off the streets as possible and paying people to and reimbursing them to use their driveways. And um, Dave Aquino could go through all the particulars if somebody has very detailed questions about it that I cannot answer. But thank you very much for entertaining um, this request. Matson's is a very popular place, as you know. Uh, it was in the Oscar nominated film, um, The Trial of the Chicago Seven, and it was also in the HBO uh, miniseries, The Plot Against America. So it's a very distinctive place and a very unique place. And uh, we're always excited whenever they're uh, filming in Kearney. Uh, is Mr. Aquino available? He should be. I am. Hi, Mr. Mayor Santos. We really appreciate you making the time for us to come on tonight. How are you, sir? Sure. Can, can you just get on the record because it's not listed on the agenda? We'll make this number six. What the re I know David just stated them what the new dates are um, and just a summary of the filming that it's in, indoors and uh, uh, so we have that on the agenda for tonight. Yes, sir. Yes, Mr. Mayor. I'd be happy to. As uh, as David explained, um, we're requesting permission to film at Madsen's. Um, our, we, the filming date is this coming Wednesday, the 19th. I'm sorry, of next week. And um, we would be doing very minor setup the day before. Uh, everything is inside the pub. Um, the day we're filming, we're only going to be there for a half day in the morning. We'll probably be done by, I'd say, about two, three o'clock in the afternoon. Um, we're keeping our footprint as, as minimal as possible in terms of, you know, impacting parking on in the neighborhood. Uh, the majority of our equipment is going to be parking at the bowling alley in North Arlington. Um, as, as Mr. Shoner had mentioned, we're working, I mean, you know, probably over the past week, we've been in touch with as many as the neighbors in the immediate area of um, as Madsen's as possible. And we've, and everyone's been very receptive. Um, you know, we're working with a, a few folks to utilize their driveways and basically keep as much stuff as possible off the streets. Um, what else can I tell you? You know, and, 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 and just to, I know you've stated a rate, but just to be, just to restate it, sure. unlike the Chicago seven, where there were exterior scenes filmed, that's not what's occurring in this instance. It's inside. It's using the period. Um, it's the natural bar setting, but it, it, it represents a certain period, an era, which, which fits in, 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 in the time period that you want to portray. So we understand why Matson's is popular, but we just want to make clear that it's, it's an interior scene that you're filming. That's correct, Mayor Santos. Okay. David, this is, Susan, this is Susan McCurry. Um, I, along with, um, Councilman Fitzita, we're the council uh, people in where this uh, Matson's uh, is located. Um, and I recall that when we were looking at this before, when you had um, looked to try to do it this week, uh, you had originally had um, many tractor trailers and vans, you know, the usual equipment that you need uh, located uh, right next to Matson's and kind of taking up a lot of space. Sure. Since then, since finding out that we had the road program going on, we appreciate that you had tried to um, eliminate most, of, if not all, of the uh, on-street parking that would um, conflict with uh, the residents trying to also find their own parking spaces while the road program was going on, so that you had reduced it down to uh, three parking spaces that would be impacted um that you would need reserved for the filming purpose is that still where you're at now even though it's uh, the 18th 
um, you're looking to just minimally use the impact uh, to that level to three parking spaces? I, Mr. McCurry, uh, yes. So our, you know, if the um, our original data, I know it conflicted with the road work that was expected right. there. So we were able, even in that instance, we were, you know, made accommodations to minimal uh, minimize our footprint, as you just stated. Um, if the if the work is is completed before we're our new date, which is this Wednesday, um, we're still a majority of our our equipment is parking at the bowling alley. Um, so we could do you know one of two scenarios. We could you know proceed as what you just mentioned as far as just using the spots on Elm Street and just to be um, to clarify the spots on Elm Street that was in front of the the bar itself. So in the event that we see out the windows, you know there's no cars that are of the wrong period as, as the mayor's kind of had explained that uh, our show set in the 90s so um if um you know we could and then the you know in order to get our equipment there we would literally have box trucks that would pull up with you know with the you know the um with the help of the the police department unload and those trucks could go park in the bowling alley however if the if the road work was completed before we which i believe it is from the schedule i saw but obviously that's you know um for you guys to tell us if that um, if it was, we would request some parking on Elm Street and on Sealy, uh, specifically on on both sides of Sealy between Forest and Elm, and then just on the side of um, of Elm Street where Madsen's is, which is basically from uh, I believe Sealy to maybe right up to where Madsen's bar is. So you know we will we'll, we can make either scenario work. Um, yeah, you know, we went back to the original ask only knowing that our date shifted and the road work was expected to be completed by uh, by the time we shot. But, um, you know, we understand the impact that it might have on the on the neighbors. So, you know, we were trying to, we were willing to, you know, in order for you guys to, to give us permission, we were happy to try to make, make it work to accommodate. So you're so, looking, so if, if the road program's finished by the um, 18th, by the time you want, wish to film, you want to go back to the original uh, plan, which had the multiple vehicles parked, uh, taking up parking on both sides of Sealy uh, from uh, Elm to Forest, uh, part, uh, uh, limited area on Elm Street on both sides where Madsen's is, and then the um, corner of Sealy and Elm. It's a, a little less than what you're saying. Uh, it okay. would just uh, both sides of Sealy, between Forest and Elm, then just the side of the street that Matson's is on. Okay. Uh, from Sealy to to I believe for the, the period, for the period cars to to park. So you had the uh, outside view. Okay. Yeah, and also for the trucks to to stay there. So in that case, you know, for those for the trucks with the equipment to park during the time of there. David, just on the trucks that you're going to be parking there, I mean, Sealy should be uh, finished um, by the 19th. And my only concern is that it will be brand new, freshly paved asphalt. So any trailers that are going to be parked on the Sealy Avenue side, um, you're going to have to take the protection if you ever have any feet to the trailer, because uh, it is going to be fresh. It is going to be hot. Um, that, that's going to have to protect the road. Uh, so if it's not, if your trailers don't have wheels, they have feet that need to be raised. They need to be um, placed on wood or chucks so okay. they don't damage the road. Thank you, sir. Under yes, thank, thank you for that insight. That's important. Um, yeah, I, I just again, I just want to reiterate it. We, we really appreciate you guys taking the time to address this. And, um, you know, as, as David may have stated, we've um, been in production of this particular show since I've been. I believe I started in November and working out of Carney Point. So, um, and we've shot the entire show basically in Essex County. And this is the first instance where we've come out, you know, and requested permission to, to film in town. And, and we're happy to. Uh, the show itself kind of calls more for uh, a more urban uh, location. So we spent a lot of time in Irvington and Newark. Uh, but uh, having the ability to come out and work in, in a town is one that we, we appreciate and really you know, hope to continue to do so, um, you know, as, as. So David, on, on, on that broader point, uh, just yes. for the benefit of the public, um, in Kearney Point, which is the South Kearney and, um, of Hackensack Avenue, um, I mean, there's a whole transformation that's happening uh, along that corridor. Um, 
you know, building 78, there are a lot of small, medium sized companies, a lot of them internet, internet based, a uh, whole new community set up. And they'll also, uh, in, in the neighboring properties, also owned by Hugo New, uh, Carney Point, um, there's you. And, and, and there's this new, you know, uh, uh, film, movie, uh, you know, Netflix, Hulu, whatever you want to call it. Or, or, or whatever um, producer it is of, of content um, is also happening at the same time, uh, which is quite remarkable. It's part of the transformation of, of, of South Kearney. I would say that it's, it's an amazing transformation when you think about where it was to where it is right now. And the exciting thing is that you have the Wu-Tang filming uh, in Kearney Point um, and also, there is another show in there that's a feature film called Spinning Gold that is in another facility in the same side, which is a uh, feature film about the era of music during that Kiss, when Kiss was a big band. I don't know if any we've got any Kiss fans uh, on the council, but uh, they're there. And you also have in that same complex something called Palisade Stage, which has just been completed. And uh, it's been, as the mayor said, it's that area is being completely transformed into um, a production hub, which is actually quite exciting when you look at all the jobs and everything that it's creating. So uh, it's an exciting time. And I just wanted to say I appreciate the council um, and everything you're paying attention to this and for the time. And, and hopefully, and part of the reason why, I mean, part of it, the reason it's happening is location and the, just the raw space that that uh, Carney Point has uh, for, for, for this business. And the other part of it is that New Jersey now is more competitive with movie tax credits. So um, the legislation changed, I think you know, you would know better than I a year ago, I think, or maybe a little bit more than that. Um, so now it's, it's making us competitive with other states and trying to attract the production of, uh, of original content. So that's also very exciting. So we hope it continues and it continues to grow um, uh, in the coming years. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We would yes, thank you. you. Can I just, uh, just be, um, I agree with, every, you know, what the mayor said, it's very exciting to have filming, uh, especially the business of film. It is very exciting, but I just want to, I, I want to, I don't want to forget a detail since the request is not formally on the agenda. Sure. Uh, usually we have a time period and I know you're talking Wednesday to Friday that you're looking to uh, film. Um, is it, is the impact fr Wednesday morning? Is there a time period from Wednesday afternoon to Friday afternoon? What's the, what's the exact window of time you're looking to to have the filming occur? No, so I'm, we have it for the record. The, the day prior and the day after are are set up and breakdown days, and it's it's very minimal. It's probably so, so uh, you don't have a set time. You don't come in and say you want the street closed at. You know, the police are going to need some direction sure. that you need the street closed at at. Uh, or know that you're going to come in at Wednesday at noon or Wednesday, you, you know what I'm saying? Yes, Dave, Dave, the councilwoman is looking for a little bit more specific so that it's part of the record of what is going on. And I think you just have to be a little bit more specific in so much as that what entails a prep that is it going to be one vehicle, two vehicles? What is that impact on that Wednesday and Friday so that the councilwoman has a specifics into the record? Yeah, no, the police are also going to have to provide notice to the residents yes. too yes. i think around the area and um to just to give them a little heads up on this no absolutely um and, and the um the setup day which is tuesday it's seven to seven but we'd be working inside the bar um we probably have five to ten crew members working there um one vehicle and we've rented out there's a parking lot adjacent to the bar that we've we're working with the, the owner of that to, you know, to keep our impact off the street. Um, the filming day, um, our president. When will the impact on the street start the day before? Right. Uh, basically, we, we would start entering the, the property at 7 a.m. But um, again. But you don't need the street closed or anything like that. No, and, and not at all. And not even on the, uh, on the filming day either. You know, um, obviously, you know, we defer to the discretion of the, the, the PD that'll be working with us, but there's, there is no request at all on the, on the permit that we submitted to. And do you need the parking spaces the day before or only the day of? The day of. So normally, you know, we'll work with the, the PD to, uh, I know they'll post signs or, you know, we'll get this okay. for them. Okay. Um, and then we'll, you know, work in conjunction with them to make sure, you know, folks are notified. And, you know, we, in addition to speaking with y'all, we'll, you know, we're, we distribute resident letters to each, uh, everyone impacted in the immediate area. 
um, just to continue to what you were asking. So the, the filming day itself, um, our earliest presence will probably be 5 a.m. on that day. Um, and we should be complete. And, I, and this is all laid out in the, in the application as well. Um, but, but again, not, not to worry anyone, the 5 a.m. is indoors, right? It's not outdoors. You're not filming outdoors. I know I've said this, I've said this three times, but I just want to be clear. The disruption is limited. Is, 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 is limited. That's 100% that's accurate. Thank you. Um, and, you know, the police, whatever, what's, we basically request them when we're going to be there so that they'll also be working with us. So it's not just us. Um, and I've been doing this, you know, 20 years. In fact, the, the first job I worked on was Sopranos way back when in, yes. the, in your lovely town. So I've, I've, uh, I've spent uh, many years working in the, in the township. I'm an Essex County guy myself. Um, and I, you know, I can give you my assurance that it'll, you know, we, we do our due diligence to, um, to make sure that, you know, we leave a good impression with uh, the neighborhood we're working in and, and just, you know, so to, you know, mitigate any complaints you, you guys receive on, you know, at the, uh, at city hall and all. Thank you, David. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, so Madam Clark, I'll be number six on the communications. Uh, the next uh, item on the caucus meeting agenda uh, is uh, is the proclamations that are being issued. Uh, the first is for five new Eagle Scouts. Uh, congratulations to each one of them. Carlos uh, Sanson, John Deck, Elliot Jablonski, Nathaniel Jablonski, and Jonathan Reverendo on uh, achieving this rank. It's uh, it's a uh, it's a very substantial accomplishment over 21 merit badges and a community service project, which uh, uh, which uh, each of these uh, new Eagle Scouts uh, had a very distinctive and um, important in its own each in its own right uh, community service project that uh, bettered our community. So congratulations to each. Uh, the next uh, proclamation is recognizing the seniors of the year. Uh, this year, there are two, their husband and wife, um, and that's because they're inseparable. Um, and um, uh, they were selected uh, because of their contributions to our community, but what they also uh, represent, they are, uh, are immigrants who uh, came in the 60s um, and started a family in the U.S., each started up small businesses in the U.S., each succeeded, each went on to serve in their community. Uh, both Beatrice and Victor Santos, uh, although I've known them for many years, uh, uh, they're, not, they're not relatives of mine, at least not that, that, that I'm aware of, but they are dear friends who have contributed and were amongst the founders of the Carney Portuguese Club. So congratulations to Victor and Beatrice. Uh, for all your contributions and how uh, you're continuing to contribute and, and better uh, our town of Kearney. Uh, the next item I have is uh, May 6th, May 12th is National Nurses Week. And um, we're still in a state of emergency. Um, and uh, the past uh, 14 months uh, have shown how vital our healthcare system is. Um, how crucial they are, and especially during the peaks of the waves that we went through. Um, they worked around the clock, our health professionals, uh, especially our nurses. And here in the town of Kearney, um, our staff of nurses at the health department, uh, they too worked around the clock during the peaks, uh, whether it was contact tracing, um, trying to arrange for testing, uh, coordinating our efforts with municipal employees to ensure that municipal employees were safe. Uh, and then once vaccines became available in January, uh, being uh, at the front of our vaccine clinics. So I want to uh, congratulate all nurses. And we have one registered nurse in our council. And also congratulations to Councilwoman DeCastro, who in her professional life is uh, a registered nurse. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, during the business portion of the meeting, I have the following item. Item. Let me make sure. Here we go.
Well, items 227 is authorizing 42 one half hours of overtime in the Department of Public Works, works to assist uh, the repair of defective plumbing fi fixtures, responding to a call for a downed tree at, at the Sag and South Midland Avenues, the repair of potholes during off hours. Um, we, especially in bu on busy roads, you try to uh, either do it on weekends or uh, during uh, non-peak hours um, and sanitizing town playgrounds, buildings and vehicles. Uh, we are now uh, uh, through the DPW superintendent rather than contracting out the sanitiz sanitizing of town playgrounds, we're, we're doing it uh, with the DPW crew. Uh, resolution 228 awards a contract to JG Drywall LLC for the sum of $39,700.00 for the construction, uh, rather the repair of the 9496 Park Place retaining wall. Uh, this is a municipally owned retaining wall that's a sharp slope on uh, Park uh, William Street, Park Avenue, Park Place. Uh, there's uh, significant uh, uh, work that needs to be done on a portion of the wall, um, which is uh, uh, was recommended by the town engineer. Uh, resolution two two eight. Uh, resolution two two nine will go, be to go into closed session right now. I don't have any unless the town attorney or the town administrator uh, would like to. Um, add anything or, or propose any closed session item at this point. I have nothing there. I have nothing there. Okay. By way of reporting uh, back to the health department, um, our seven day average has continued now for about a week to below in single digits. That's uh, the seven day average of, uh, we use an average because uh, the state reporting system yeah. Uh, we're picking up someone, uh, uh, Deputy Chief McPhee, can you, can you mute? Uh, sorry, Mayor. That's okay. Um, so we, we're picking up, uh, uh, so we, we're doing the, uh, as is most, as are most municipalities, we're doing new cases on a seven day average to minimize the fluctuations in the reporting system, especially on weekends. Um, and uh, we're at six currently. Uh, we had one day of zero new cases, which is the first time in many, many months we've had zero new cases on any single day. Um, and uh, that average will continue to inch, that seven day average will continue to inch downwards um, as we get more and more people vaccinated. So now, as you've been seeing on, you know, everywhere in the US, um, there's plenty of vaccine supply. Uh, so the town, of Kearney's Health Department uh, is doing clinics tomorrow, Wednesday, and Thursday all afternoon into the early evening at the Hartung Center, 925 Passaic Avenue. Uh, and they are offering no appointment necessary. We'd prefer you'd make an appointment, but walk-ups are welcome. Uh, they have available Moderna vaccine, which is a two-dose regimen, which has a 95% efficacious rate. They also have a Johnson & Johnson Janssen vaccine it's a single dose product, um, so you don't have to worry about a second dose. The efficacious rate is the efficacy rate is um, is lower than Moderna. Um, uh, it's approximately 80%. Uh, but against severe illness, uh, it has the same efficacy rate as Moderna. So if a second dose is is a concern, then uh, Johnson and Johnson is also available if you wish it. Thirdly, and this is important, um, uh, the Pfizer vaccine requires an ultra cold freezer uh, because it has storage temperatures that are much lower than Moderna and Johnson and Johnson. Uh, it is also a two dose vaccine, but the separation is only three weeks as opposed to four weeks. But the key or, or the, the, the advantage or the benefit of the Pfizer vaccine is that it has received authorization from the FDA for uh, persons as young as 12 years old. Uh, right now, Moderna is only for 18 and older, as is Johnson & Johnson. Pfizer will be, is 12 and older. Uh, so we have our, we've received our ultra-cold freezer. 
It is being it is being installed at the main health department, 645 Kearney Avenue. The timing is perfect because renovations are just about complete. There's a few punch list items, uh, and uh, we are ordering Pfizer supply for next week. So the goal the goal is we haven't yet set the clinics, but uh, for next week. But the goal is to uh, provide all of the options next week. And hopefully we can get young people with parental authorization or with a, uh, with their parent, uh, with their guardian or their parent accompanying them um, for vaccinations. And that will be part of the continuing effort to get that seven day average number to as close as possible to zero. Not just one day with zero, but um, wouldn't it be great if we were at one or statistically close to zero on a seven day average? Uh, and I think we can get there as long as the vaccination numbers keep going up. So uh, it is FDA approved. Now people say, well, it's emergency authorization. Yes, because under the FDA guidelines, permanent authorization requires a longer time period of data analysis. Uh, obviously the health benefits overwhelm uh, any of the negatives that have emerged to date, which have been limited allergic reactions to the Johnson and Johnson vaccine um, and very limited aller uh, allergic reactions to Pfizer and Moderna. So um, uh, there is information available on our website. Also go to the uh, FDA website. Uh, if you have any doubts about these vaccines, they are authorized. I know there's uh, false information out there that they are not authorized. Um, and um, it is important to get to that um, key number, which re represents herd immunity, so that we get that average to as close to a zero as possible. Uh, and then, um, you know, we're reopening. I said businesses reopening May 19th under the emergency orders from the governor, uh, which all municipalities have to comply with. Uh, and enforce, and if we don't enforce, the state police enforces. So it's good to see that uh, businesses can reopen and also community events. We're starting to see more and more community events. And there are two important events that are upcoming. They're a little bit later than, than usual this year, but for good reason, and, and we're gonna have them. First is Little League opening on Saturday, May 15th at the Gunnel Oval. And then there'll be the softball opening on Friday, May 21st. So both those events um, in, um, are going to be part of, uh, we missed them last year. We didn't have them last year, but uh, hopefully um, they will be back and they'll be back for good. Um, um, and that uh, these restrictions are lifted more and more so we can, uh, um, I don't know if nor normalcy is a, is, a, is a loaded word, but to try to get back to as much as possible to all the community events and the gatherings that uh, are important to who we are as a community. Uh, and that's my report uh, for tonight. Councilwoman DeCastro. Thank you, Mayor. This season on time, I have resolution 232, authorizing change order number five in the amount of $3,994.04 for the Kearney COVID Response Center at Kearney Health Department. Total change order increase of 19.72%. And um, just to, like to extend congratulations to our seniors of the year, Beatrice and Victor Santos, and to all the nursing professionals and my colleagues in the community for their dedication to their patients. Thank you um, also to the scouts for achieving the rank of Eagle Scouts. And thank you, Mayor Santos, for continuing the efforts for securing vaccines for our Kearney residents. Um, just like to report at the Kearney Health Department substation located at 50 um, Belgrove Drive. Um, there were 360 families serviced um, today with the free uh, food distribution. I'd like to thank the Hudson County, Lou Batista, our health department and the, and, the, and the fire department for coordinating pickup delivery and distribution and rolling out um, to, our, to our community directly. We have been confirmed for Tuesday delivery. For Tuesday delivery um, for the uh, month of May. Um, Kevin, you have to mute yourself. 
Thank you, Council. So we are confirmed for the month of May. Um, as soon as the delivery confirmation is um, received, um, the health department is posting on our town website. So be on alert for the social media posting and the website. Um, also during this time, as we continue to come together as a community during this pandemic, the opioid crisis continues to grow and help by saving lives and lowering those numbers and provide um, a live virtual training program through Hudson Regional in collaboration with Robert Wood Johnson, training classes virtual. There was one class today um, between two and 3.30 and the next virtual training class would be June 21st at 6.30. Participants upon training completion will be shipped free Nar Nar Narcan kits to their home. Our next, we continue coming together as a community and saving lives. Our next blood drive will be hosted on at the Carney Library with their mobile unit parked right outside the library. Thank you, Ken and Josh for your coordination. Um, all safety guidelines and precautions are followed. It's by appointment only. It's scheduled for May 20th between the hours of 1230 and 730. And all um, information and appointment link can be found on our town website. Donations are needed to help provide emergency treatment. And thank you, Mayor. Um, that's it for this evening. Thank you, Councilwoman. Councilman Cardozo. Good evening, Mayor. Tonight, I don't have no business, but I also like to congratulate the, my neighbors uh, and friends, Beatrice and Victor Sanz for a well-deserved recognition of uh, seniors of the year. Um, they, they are persons that very, working very good for our community and especially for the Portuguese club. And also I'd like to congratulate all nurses on this nurse week and especially our colleague, Mary Trin de Castro for the job well done. And, uh, and also I'd like to congratulate all those Eagle Scouts uh, in, the, in their accomplishments. And that's it, Mayor, thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Santana. Good evening, Mayor. Um, there's no formal business for me tonight. However, um, I would like, I know that it's going to go through all of us and all of us feel like compelled to um, congratulate Mr. and Ms. Santos on this great accomplishment as being recognized as senior of the years. Um, um, so congratulations to them. Also, being a Boy Scout myself, um, I just want to congratulate all of the new um, Eagle Scouts. Um, I think they make our town proud and uh, their involved, involvement in the community. And uh, it's very clear, um, specifically um, the latest one that we saw with, not the latest, but the one before the latest, which was from um, Elliot, um, I think was Nate Jablonski that did the, the walk, right? Um, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so that was a great um, event for the town and, and our community. Um, and I want to congratulate our nurse, which besides being a mom, besides being a councilwoman, um, besides being involved in the community, still finds time to be in the health department um, almost every single day when not in person, but contacting the health department. So Mary, I really, from the bottom of my heart, and from our community, I want to thank you for what you do to our community. Congratulations, and you really deserve um, everything you've got for everything you represent to our community. Thank you. Um, Mayor, I also want to um, recognize that we have a National Police Week um, this week between May 9th and, and May 15th. So congratulations to all of our police uh, heroes, and um, thank you for all you do not only to our community but throughout the world um really appreciate it and that's all i have for tonight mayor thank you very much thank you councilman councilman kanaka good evening mayor i have no formal business on the agenda tonight but i also like to congratulate the five young men of achieving the rank of eagle scout i also was a boy scout but never achieved the rank of mm -hmm. eagle scouts so it, when someone does that, I, it's very impressive for the time they put in and dedicated their time to the community, you know, their community service. So it's very special for them. 
and our community. I also like to congratulate Beatrice and Victor Santos of the Seniors of the Year. The nurse, Nurses Week, it should be more than just a week for the nurses. I personally know how important they are. Uh, Mary Treen, you're included. I know you're a nurse and all the things that you do. Uh, i just like to thank you. And earlier, the mayor uh, spoke about the opening day. It's a little different from the years past. It usually was always early April. Uh, they already started playing the games, the Little League games. The first game was yesterday that my son was involved in. There was another game tonight all week. So that's a little different. Usually it's opening day. Then you have the first game. But the fields were ready. The teams were waiting two years to play. So they got out there and... Uh, it looks good so far with the teams. And also the softball, the girls are out there. They're also playing. I saw them tonight on my way out. And Mr. Neglia had mentioned about the use of the playground and the whole facility. I see I'm down there every day. It's not just children. Their families are there. They're bringing their kids out to the playground. It's, it's great. Uh, there's only a few more things you know, that need to be finished, but overall it's, it's being used, you know, by the whole community. It, it's really great to see everybody out using it. And that's it for the report for tonight, Mayor. Mayor, um, yes. if I may, just before you move to, to um, Councilman Ackle, um, I just want, because a resident from Sanford Avenue contacted me and um, wanted to thank the DPW um for putting the signs up um that restricted the the trucks and um he just wanted to report that it has reduced uh, tremendously and um it really worked so he wanted to personally thank um dpw and uh, kevin murphy and david hayes for for what they've done so thank you very much to the both of them for putting the signs up so quickly being ready as soon as as you, the ordinance was approved by us so thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Mayor, one thing before you move on, please support our local businesses. I just wanted to add that. Absolutely. That's it. Absolutely, Councilman. Thank you. Councilwoman Echo. Thank you, Mayor. Tonight I have resolution 230, which is a resolution approving a settlement in the administrative law matter entitled Nature's Choice Corporation versus New Jersey Division of Fire Safety. This is a settlement that's been um, a long time coming and involved quite a bit of um, uh, negotiation. So it's 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 settled in our favor, and that's that's a great thing. Um, uh, I have resolution 231, which is a resolution authorizing a professional service agreement with Mont McDonald to perform licensed site remediation services related to the remediation of a Kearney Fire Station number 2, 109 Kearney Avenue. This is a, um, uh, it's a remediation, but basically they have to go back and they have to check it. And because they did the original work, um, it works out that it's the best way for us to handle that. And they go in to make sure that everything's still intact and it's still um, functioning the way it's supposed to and it's safe. So that's what that's all about. The other thing, the only thing I really wanted to mention was um, the Kearney Fire Department, May 4th was um, shine your light on, for firefighters. And I know that this is May 11th and it was last week, but I just always like to shine a light on our firefighters because why not? Um, and I still have my red light outside, so I guess I'll keep it up for a while. Um, just like to remember how, you know, critical their job is, how hard they work, you know, and when, when Councilwoman De Castro mentioned them even tonight talking about how they, they still every single week, um, they're critically involved with making sure that the foodstuffs are delivered and, and, and managed and handled. And without their help, I don't know, you know, how that would get accomplished. So they're kind of the unsung heroes many, many times, you know, we hear the fire engine rolling by, we hear the sirens and, you know, we think of them in that regard, but the, but our firefighters and our police officers and so many of our town employees, they're on the job all the time. So um, I just wanted to make sure I mentioned that again and, and reached out and gave them our, our grateful thanks for that. Of course, recognizing that our scouts, recognizing our seniors of the year, as everyone else has done as well, um, we're very fortunate to have such a, um, a, a welcoming and dedicated and, and a nurturing community. So thank you for that. That's all I have, Mayor. Thank you, Councilwoman. Councilwoman Doyle. Good evening, Mayor. Um, I will be moving the consent agenda. 
all matters listed with an asterisk are considered to be routine non-controversial by the mayor and council will be approved by one motion. There'll be no separate discussion of these items unless a council member or citizen so requests, in which case the item may be removed from the consent agenda and considered in its normal sequence on the agenda. I'll ask that minutes be approved pending any corrections. Uh, circulated is the regular meeting of April 27th, 2021. A motion, I'll ask for a motion to spend the reading of communications and read by title only. Resolution 219 is the bill list resolution. Resolution 220 is a resolution authorizing permission to encroach upon the right of way at 32 East Midland Avenue, block 204, lot 45 for the purpose of replacing an existing fence. Resolution 221 is a resolution authorizing permission to encroach upon the town right of way at 48th Duke, 48th Duke Street, Block 270, Lot 6, for the purpose of removing two underground oil tanks. Resolution 222 is a resolution authorizing permission to encroach upon the town right of way at 173 Dukes Street, Block 267, Lot 59, for the purpose of constructing a concrete sidewalk in the Stone Belt area. Resolution 223 is a resolution granting permission to J. Fletcher Kramer and Son, Inc. of Hackensack, New Jersey for emergency road opening permit at Hackensack Avenue near US 109 bypass in order to replace a leaking water main. Resolution 224 is a resolution authorizing 10 and a half hours of overtime to Dennis Conseco, MIS technician to provide virtual meeting support for the KMUA meeting on April 28, 2021 the zoning board meeting on May 4th, 2021, and the mayor and council meeting on April 27th and May 11th, 2021 at the cost of $734.27. Resolution 225 is a resolution authorizing three hours of overtime to omnibus driver Carmen or Carcel to transport residents to and from a scheduled COVID-19 clinic at Kearney High School on Saturday, April 7th, 2021 at the cost of $74.48. Uh, just by the way of reporting, um, I too want to congratulate uh, Beatrice and Victor Santos. Um, I certainly enjoy their company uh, every year. Um, I enjoy going to the Portuguese uh, celebration down at the club and I get my annual fix of sardines and Beatrice takes very good care of me to make sure that I get them hot off the grill. So congratulations to both of them. Uh, they're certainly well-deserving. Also to uh, Nurse DeCastro, uh, Mary Trine saved my life uh, when I collapsed at mm -hmm. the um, uh, November 11th event up at uh, the Veterans Park. Uh, uh, Mary Trine stayed with me the whole time and made sure that everything was okay and that I got the right medication and I certainly appreciate it. So I've had Hands on with Mary Trine. She's a wonderful person and certainly a great nurse. Uh, just one more uh, note regarding the Memorial Day Parade. Um, I have reached out to both uh, the Commandant uh, from the Marine Corps and the two commanders from 1302 and Post 99. And we're postponing the Memorial Day Parade till 2022. Uh, as I've reported in the past, we are going to have the uh, services at each of the monuments and uh, there won't be a reception at the uh, American Legion on Friday evening. So I'm not sure if they're having the open houses yet. I don't think that's been decided. They are having the pig roast uh, over at the Marine Corps, but as far as the open houses, uh, they haven't made a final decision on that. So unfortunately, uh, we are not having the parade, but we're certainly going to recognize those that gave off. And that's my report, Mayor. And they'll also do the wreaths that weekend. Yes, the wreaths are ordered. Yes, they're doing that. Thank you, Council. Council no. Manetta. I'm sorry, Council McCurry. I've already I've gone backwards instead of forwards. Council McCurry. Thank you, Mayor. Tonight I'll have the following ordinances for introduction 018, vacating handicapped parking spaces at 253 Belgrove Drive and 328 Forest Street. 019, which is establishing handicapped parking spaces at 153 Chestnut Street, 182 Wilson Avenue, and 612 Elm Street. 020, which is amending section 7 17.1 of the town code to exclude vehicles over designated gross weight on B Street between Belleville Turnpike and Sealy Avenue, 
this is similar to the Sanford Avenue um, ordinance we had adopted at the last meeting uh, where it, um, the gross weight that we are excluding is four tons, over four tons. Um, this is largely due to the uh, negative effect that delivery uh, delivery tra trailers are having to, uh, when they're using Beach Street uh, to deliver to the Bell Pike businesses. Um, this is also on recommendation of the police department. I think they've been getting a, a lot of, uh, having a lot of issues up there. Um, o 21, which is to further amend and supplement an ordinance entitled an ordinance concerning civil service in the town of Kearney, County of Hudson, adopted April 24th, 2018, salaries for department heads and assistant department heads, January 1st, 2021 to December 31st, 2021. Uh, this is um, based upon their prior approval this year and the salary increase for this time period is 1.75%. Uh, uh, and on second reading, I have an ordinance prohibiting the operation of cannabis businesses within the town of Kearney. Um, as we stated on introduction, um, this is opting out of the state law, which permits the sale of recreational marijuana within municipalities and cities. Um, this excludes this kind of business within the town of Kearney. Um, they are not permitted, and that includes retail, manufacturing, distribution. It also re it does though reinforce our prior ordinance where we uh, are permitting um, in a limited area in, in the town, South Corny, uh, the uh, dist uh, the retail of medical marijuana. And that is all I have on the business portion. Um, just by way of uh, I guess reporting, I'll follow everybody else. Um, unfortunately, when you get to my part of the meeting, everyone has said it so much better than I have. But I'll congratulate the uh, seniors, uh, Beatrice and uh, Victor Santos. Um, they have been long time engaged in our community, not only the Portuguese club, but within the whole community um, is well deserved. And I'll congratulate also the all the Eagle Scouts. Um, it is um, always great uh, with our uh, Boy Scouts and our troops within our town and many of the uh, scouts in town that we get every year, we seem to have a lot of um, our scouts rising to the Eagle Scout level. And it's quite an achievement that they will all carry with them as they move on. Uh, and also, you know, obviously with the nurses, I mean, it goes without saying, especially, uh, I guess, uh, with what we have been through for the last year and a half, um, but I won't say anything more, I guess, uh, you, you guys have said all you can about our Councilwoman, uh, uh, Mary mm -hmm. Castro, so I'll just say that she is the best, and that's, uh, I'll end it at that. And, uh, and also by way of reporting and a reminder that um, Hudson County's Emergency Rental Assistance Program is still active and taking applications. So residents that are tenants that are behind on their rent uh, please contact uh, the Hudson County uh, Department of Social Services. Um, you can call them. I can leave the information with the clerk's office. It's obviously on our website. Um, and we can uh, just call them and they will talk to you about the application, help you fill out the application and, uh, and uh, maybe get you some rental assistance going forward. And that's all I have tonight, Mayor. Thank you, Councilwoman. Councilman Facito. Thank you, Mayor. I have no formal business this evening on the agenda, but I would like to uh, echo the rest of the council by congratulating uh, Mr. and Mrs. Santos uh, being selected as seniors of the year and also uh, recognizing and congratulating uh, five Eagle Scouts uh, that have uh, just attained uh, the rank of Eagle Scout. Um, this, uh, I'd like to also congratulate, uh, Councilwoman DeCastro and all of the nurses and Chief King, uh, and all of the police department and National Police Week. Um, this past week, um, the, uh, Food Pantry ne Network serviced 243 families, and I'd like to thank, um, the Kearney Fire Department, the Kearney Police Department, 
and all of the uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the TBW who also contributes uh, in time and and manpower to uh, keep these food the food pantry network running. So I'd like to commend them all and congratulate them all, uh, as well as all of the service organizations, small businesses, schools, and the school children who are uh, supplying and keeping the, the uh, supply of food going into the food pantry network and to keep the community uh, servicing those in our community that are in need and, and not to uh, leave out all of the volunteers uh, that receive the food, prepare the food, and distribute it each week. So uh, I'd like to give a big shout out and a thank you to, uh, to all those volunteers. Uh, that's all I have this evening, Mayor. Thank you. Councilman, I want to echo that at the, uh, the volunteers at the Food Pantry Network. Um, kind of uh, uh, first prez. Uh, and also our Carney Health Department. Uh, they had a food distribution box food distribution yesterday. Yesterday? Yesterday. Yeah. Was it over 300 families were served. Um, this is food that's made available to the federal government that comes through the county. Our fire department assists, our health department with the delivery and, and, uh, and, and getting uh, and assisting the health department. And then the health department does the task of, in a, in a safe, socially distanced way, uh, distribute the food. Um, it's not quite weekly because we don't get food distribution every week. We're trying to make it every week, but th thank you to them as well. And also, uh, if, if I may, I may, I'd like to thank the, the paramedics who delivered uh, so much food and blankets and beds uh, for the, uh, the animal shelter this week. I just want to leave them out. Thank you. Uh, thank and, you. Uh, may, if, I may, if I may, I'd like to recognize the, the public, uh, the Peruvian Civic Ooh. Association. They keep continuing doing uh, food distribution every week on Carnival. Well. Yes. Thank you. A lot of generosity in our community. Yes. At this point, uh, we'll open it to members of the public uh, on any matter of public interest. Please remember to limit your comments to 10 minutes. Uh, the Madam, uh, Madam Clerk will recognize speakers and keep time. Um, and uh, Dennis Conceso will assist as, uh, uh, as, uh, as we need, Dennis. So Madam Clerk, who's the first speaker? Our first speaker is Lexi. Lexi, unmute yourself. Yeah, she has to unmute herself. Okay, we'll come back to uh, Lexi. There's no last name provided on the list. Uh, it may be Ms. Campos, but I'm not sure. Uh, the next speaker, Madam Clerk. Okay, our next speaker, Melanie Ryan. Hello. I have my list ready for you. Um, first thing, did we get the list of pilot pay, how much we received in pilot payments for 2020? Uh, the CFO is finalizing the list, the audit. The numbers get adjusted as the data is audited. Uh, the data is audited because the payments in lieu of tax agreement have a minimum annual payment, and then uh, the number then uh, will increase uh, depending on the gross income, i.e. the rentals received by the property uh, during the year. And that number is not finalized until it's audited. So uh, on the Russo sites, uh, he recently, uh, the CFO recently received the audit. So those numbers should come forward soon. Also, I believe the preferred freezer site on Bergen Avenue. Um, I think the Hugo new site has not uh, yet uh, provided that audit. But we will put out all that information, we hope, uh, uh, by Friday, Melanie. Okay, now, just to clarify, the when you say gross revenue, that includes if they're charging for parking spaces and such as well? It, it, right, it's not net revenue, it's gross revenue. So each agreement is negotiated, each has percentage of gross, of, of gross revenue is different on each. It, can, uh, it ranges, but it's, if revenue, if rents go up, for example, or parking fees go up, or 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 if they go up, 
um, and they're higher than the minimum amount under the agreement, then that overage has to be paid. So you don't finalize the number until you get that audit. Um, and then uh, and then we back out, uh, uh, once we finalize our numbers, we then back out a number for the Board of Education under the, uh, right, the ordinance that we adopted. Correct. Right. Now, um, if I go to the town website and I go to the tax, the property tax records, blah, blah, and it shows that a property owner paid $1.6 in taxes, that does not include the pilot payments, correct? The, that the, the amounts that are listed on the town website are just for the land, not the improvements, which would be the buildings, which are what included in the pilot, correct? Right. The, the block and lot number will only have the land assessment. Uh, the land assessment is included as part of the pilot payment. So when we're talking about the pilot payment, we're talking about all including the land assessment. If you go to the block and lot, all you're going to get is the land assessment uh, number, which is um, which is far from what the total number is, very far from what the total number. The total number is probably three times higher than that, if not four times higher than that. Okay. Now, earlier you were talking about the start date of April 26th, the pump station. Can you clarify whether you were talking about Duke's, Duke's Devon Tappan Point, or were you talking about Harrison Avenue? No, the 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 I think the town engineer referred to a groundbreaking for the new pump station at Dukes, Devon, Terrace, and Hoyt. I, th I I think that's what you're referring to, Melanie, right? When you when Michael was well, giving I was confused summary. because I thought that's what he was talking about, and then a question got asked about the easement from the post office, so it totally threw me off. That's a separate project. So that's the Harrison Avenue project. Right. right, the Harrison Avenue pump station we're rehabbing. It's an existing pump station that's now op operating on, um, as we're rehabbing it, and the work is ongoing, we're operating on temporary pumps at that station. Um, in order to do the improvements that designed by Negley Engineering, there's a parcel we're negotiating with the Postal Service. That's Harrison Avenue. The one that we're having the groundbreak and the, 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 the 28th date that, uh, that Michael referred to earlier is 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 the Devon Terrace uh, Dukes Hoyt Devon Terrace pump station. Okay. Right, um, now, have we made the state of New Jersey has recently changed the requirements for municipalities handling of construction permits. Um, I'm assuming that those changes are part of that uniform construction code thing that we have with the state, but do we need to look at changing any ordinances as far as the applications being um, allowed to be completed online, submitted online, fees that we're going to charge? And do we have to get the webmaster involved to set that up? Okay, I think, uh, I think we're waiting on the construction official to make uh, recommendations so we can implement that um, Melanie, I don't have, uh, um, uh, I don't know what the schedule of that is. Uh, uh, Steve Marks, the administrator, do you know, or, or should we wait for the next meeting? Um, I don't have any information on it. If Melanie could uh, furnish any information, I could definitely. Yeah, I'll send, you, I'll, send you, I'll send you the um, information that the state actually put out to all of the contractors already. They, the state notified the contractors, I believe, before the municipality. Um, but basically, it says that instead of having to go to the construction code office, you can fill everything out online, submit it all electronically, pay it either via check or credit card. The municipality is allowed to charge a fee for the servicing of that if we use a third-party vendor for it. Um, not only that, but the permits will then be returned to the contractors via electronic delivery and scheduling of all inspections has to be done through our website. So we're going to have to talk with our inspectors to make sure that their posts, that their, their availability for inspection are available because it's going to be like an interactive calendar from what I'm reading. But that's all. So, we'll, be. so, so Melanie, we'll get an update from the construction official for our next meeting. Uh, to go over the details. I don't think we have uh, answers for your specific questions this evening. Okay. 
that when we discussed the oval, we did not discuss the um, monument wall. Are those plaques in and are they up? Mayor, if I may? Yes, Mr. Nevin. Um, Melanie, we are waiting for those those plaques to be uh, furnished to us. They've been ordered. We are hopefully going to get them within the next couple of weeks. As uh, we have two of them in that were in the original design. Uh, so the short answer to you is we're waiting for those those plaques. They've been ordered um, and we're just waiting for delivery. Okay, next question is on the second dose vaccine clinics. There seems to be some confusion. Um, when people got their first dose, they got it at the high school, they got it at the Hartong Center, wherever. And then the four week schedule, they were given an appointment for a four week follow up. The school is now open. So people that got um, their vaccines on Mondays and Tuesdays, Thursdays and Fridays, which are now the days the school are open, we're not holding clinics there. So those second doses are all being done at Hartong Center, yes or no? Yeah, so they, they would have gotten an email notice from the email they provided when they first signed up. Uh, we did have a sign on the door on King Street. I don't know if it's still there, uh, but they could come in. Right now, it's no appointment is necessary. So if they have their car, and they're in the system as well. Um, if they come on any of our days, uh, they can get their second dose. Uh, it does not have to be exactly the 28th day. Um, so, but yes, so tomorrow. Um, so they don't need to call and make an appointment and do all of that. We prefer, to make, we prefer that they'd make an appointment, but they can just show up. Right now, there's so much supply uh, and not enough people coming in that, uh, yes, walk-ups are welcome. Okay. About six months ago, maybe, might even be a year ago, there was a request from uh, Super because he was building a soundstage studio, something. We had, they had to move the oil, re the cooking oil place and some of it came over onto the Carney side of the super property. Do we have any update if that studio is being built or not? I don't know the answer to that. Um, I think uh, the potential tenant uh, is still looking at other sites, which would lead me to think um, that we, that we can get him all for ourselves down at Carney Point? Um, I think that's one of the possible sites yes. that's being considered. Okay. Um, the apartments on Ivy and Schuyler, when we talked to council meetings, so we were going to look to see if they had resubmitted their um, applications for variances and such, because we know that they were taking out the retail space and reducing the number of apartments because they couldn't provide the number of parking spaces. And do we have any update on that? The lumber yard. Yes, we, um, uh, Steve, was it you or Jim Bruno that looked into the uh, site plan approval for the site? It was not me. I don't know if it was Jim Bruno. We looked at Marjam. Oh, Marjam? That, yes. uh, that was actually Tony Chisari looked into it, but we reported to me that uh, there was nothing in the um, in the approvals that could make them put up the buffers that uh, was being requested. Um, I'm not sure that's the property that Melanie. I don't. I don't think that's the property that Melanie's talking uh, about. I think she's talking about the lumber. The lumber property. The lumber the yard street. and across Quincy, the street. Quincy. Well, Quincy and Skyler. Right. Skyler and Quincy, not Squat. Skyler and Ivy. Um, where and that's the, pending. The, that's the pending before the, the. That's pending before the zoning board. That's okay. a pending application. Okay. Well, right, I think they had responded. I just didn't know if anybody knew if they resubmitted. And last um, but not least, no, I believe it's a pending application. Is Tony on the line? Yes, I'm here, Mayor. That 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 was revised. Uh, the, the information she was giving was accurate. They reduced the number of units. They eliminated the commercial space on the the ground floor. And uh, to be honest with you, I, I, that that has been approved by the zoning board. The revised plan has been re approved. So now it goes to the planning board. No, I wouldn't have nope. to. No. So okay. what? So the what is the number of units that was approved, Tony? Uh, Sixty-nine. 
And do they meet the parking requirements? Yes, as a matter of fact, uh, they uh, provide one more parking space than is required. Um, which oh, brings sorry. me back to a question that I asked at the meeting for the approval of 60 Passaic Avenue, where we have an ordinance on the books that says that um, these property owners or new residential have to provide X number of parking spaces. And at least one of the developers I felt was circumventing the um, intent of the law by charging for parking so that residents were then parking on surface street to avoid paying the parking. Do we know whether or not that's going to be the case in this situation as well? I, I can answer that question. They're not paying, they're not charging for parking. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Okay. Last but not least, then I'll go away. At the January, uh, one of the January meetings, we had a presentation from the Essex Hudson uh, Greenway, Beltway, whatever they were calling it. And nobody, and it, basically no decision was made at that point because there was so little information available. Have they come back to us with any additional information with regard to the security or the maintenance or providing emergency services? No additional detail has been provided, Melanie. Melanie, I just want to no, no, that detail is fundamental. We need that detail okay. to evaluate that proposal. I just also want to clarify too. My understanding of the Greenway is that at no point would the town ever, it's not going to be a town park. Would the town own it or have any kind of responsibility for it? Because it's not a town park. It would be if any, if the entities that are looking at this park this greenway are either the counties, whether Essex or county, so it would either be a park like West Hudson Park owned by the county or the state. So I think that's kind of, I just want to clarify that because- uh, Well, I yeah, but I, I'm just really concerned because if the county is responsible for it and a call goes into the police station for an ambulance, they're gonna send one of our ambulances. Well, it's they're the same as with West Hudson county. Park. It's going to have the same type of effect. Yes, but and West Hudson Park, a, but West Hudson Park is five blocks long. We're talking about six miles. Yes, correct. Yeah. So there are there are fundamental right. details on 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 security right. and maintenance that need to be provided in order to evaluate this. You are correct, Melanie. Right. Without the detail. As the councilwoman said, the municipality will not take on the responsibility of patrolling or maintaining a six mile linear park. And uh, and we don't know if the counties are gonna undertake right. that responsibility. Right. But, but I also don't think it is the intent of us to, no matter how it works out, whether it actually happens or not, I don't know, you know, they're still, they, they haven't even acquired it yet. Um, I think the, as far as where we're, I think as far as the town is sitting, you know, uh, um, is that it's not, the intent of this, the Greenway is not to have mu the individual municipalities own it. The intent of the Greenway is to have uh, the either Essex or Hudson County, Essex Hudson County share in the ownership of it. So it's an Essex Hudson Park or the state do it. Okay, uh, and while I agree with you 100% yeah. in that assessment, I also know we don't all own Walmart and we spend a lot of police resources down at Walmart. Correct. That's so we would, want to see the detail, we would want to see the details of the correct. plan. And those we are the details, to... right. And those are the details that need to be provided. That is correct. Thank you. Melanie, I yes, think time has expired. I just said goodbye. She beat you to the punch. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All speaker. right. Our next speaker will be Lexi. She's unmuted. Lexi, you could talk. Can you hear us, Lexi? We can't hear you. You may have to redial in if, if, um, because we're not showing that you're muted. And we're showing your hand is up. And our microphone is unmuted, so. Let's come back, let's let's go to the next speaker, Madam Clerk and Dennis. Okay, 
Um, our next speaker is John Pino. John, you have to unmute. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, the question on uh, ordinance uh, uh, 17, 2021, 17 on the Mar um, cannabis uh, businesses. Um, from my understanding, uh, from what was explained, uh, that we're opting out entirely from uh, cannabis uh, sales in the town of Corny, with the exception of uh, medical, uh, medical marijuana. Is that correct? John, yes, that yeah. is correct. Yeah, yes. what, but the medical marijuana is not within, is uh, in a location yeah. in South Corny. Um, I, 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 there's a better one. Uh, Jim, a zone, is it a zone area that we have? Yes, it's, it's, it's the South Corny Law Zone, I believe. That's right. KN. And we're restating our earlier position. This is not new. The reason we're restating it is because of the state legislation which requires municipalities to state their position after the state law was adopted and, and the window to do so, it's a limited window. We can't reserve it. So this ordinance readopts our earlier ordinance. Our earlier ordinance regarding medical marijuana, correct, and bans uh, recreational and, marijuana throughout the country. Correct, so it, it's, it readopts the prior position, yeah. which I think you previously spoke on, Mr. Pinot. Well, I did at the last meeting, but I didn't get a chance to ask. The no, no, not this one. The earlier ordinance from last year. You also spoke in the public hearing on that one. Okay. All right. So mar uh, medical marijuana is allowed in, in, in sale in South Kearney, but then any other cannabis is not allowed throughout the uh, town of Kearney, correct? Is that, am, I stating, am I stating that correctly? That's correct. Mm -hmm. All right. Does it make any sense to allow uh, cannabis down in, uh, not medical, but regular cannabis sales in South Corny? Would that generate uh, any revenue from the town in terms of sales tax or any other revenue that would come in that would be uh, beneficial to uh, raise income? Yeah, I, I haven't seen any analysis which would show the revenue to the municipality would be significant. Rather, it's sort of there's uh, there's quite a bit of the stories that have from the legalization in other states, um, and if you look at you know share prices of the of the companies that cultivate, grow, and sell marijuana recreationally, it's become a huge for-profit business. Uh, but in terms of, of how much, you know, I, I think the state legislature had good intent in trying to share uh, income with um, with municipalities and with um, individuals who. Uh, may have been um, uh, for for small uses of marijuana may have uh, uh, had a criminal uh, record because of that and trying to achieve some kind of social justice. Um, but I think at the end of the day, I uh, make no mistake about it. it's it's for a for-profit industry. Um, and um, we don't think whatever revenue would be generated is worth um, the um, I mean, I, uh, is is worth the the you know there I think there still is I, I I don't think it's worth the 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 disruption that I think could occur uh, from that kind of operation and, and and if and if and I think there's some if you could look at what's going on in Sea Caucus with with their dispensary there um, even on the dispensary side. It's um, it's presented issues in communities. Um, you know, I think the dispensary issue is a harder one because um, there are you know ver very valid medical reasons. So we wanted to provide at least one location for a dispensary. Uh, but going beyond that, um, I, you know, I, I, I think um, I think our approach um, is not one that uh, I would trade for a, a few thousand dollars. Um, you're approving a, a settlement of uh, administrative law on a resolution uh, 2230, administrative law matter entitled Nature's Choice Corporation versus New Jersey Division of Fire Safety. Could you explain in, in a nutshell what, what that involves? Is the town paying some money or is this some fine? I, I'm not no, we're, we're, we're receiving. So we're receiving. I can handle that, Mayor. Yeah, it's 
we're getting we're getting money back. What happened was um, there was it's a settlement in our favor for twenty five thousand dollars, and the the course of the settlement goes through various um, incidents that had occurred from twenty thirteen all the way through twenty nineteen and various um, times where there were fires, that there were incidents at that particular location where the fire department responded. And generally what happens is then we try to be compensated for um, any monies that are spent that maybe were, uh, not maybe, but were um, incurred by the fire department that should maybe not have happened because of some, some reason that it wasn't done properly on their end. So over the course of years, We've been following this and following this and following this. And finally, we have a settlement um, which comes in in our favor for the in the amount of $25,000. And that's in a nutshell what it is. Okay. Now, the other issue I have, and now I'm not having the issue, is last meeting um, I got muted and I thought this was some new policy where uh, I didn't get my 10 minutes if once I, you know, I, I asked one question. Uh, I then was asked, was I done? And I said, that was my question. I didn't, I didn't know, I've been at these meetings both in person and on Zoom, and I've been able to go and back and forth just the way I'm doing now. Nope. Uh, but at that meeting, nope. I got muted and I, I was expecting, I, I, I just felt right away that I wasn't getting unmuted. Uh, and then when I try to speak on ordinances, which I was gonna ask the marijuana question, I had my hand raised and I was told, the that uh not to be i was told i was staff was told not to unmute me i then lowered my yeah. hand again and raised it just to indicate that yes i did want to talk on ordinances um and so yeah. it, it appeared that i was just muted because i asked a, a question that that you know uh you know was not um uh, i guess uh wanted to be asked i guess i don't know but that, that's the impression yeah. i got that so is the policy still the same as now that you can get on, you can ask your questions, you can go back and forth for your 10 minutes. Is that correct? So, so no, the policy hasn't changed in my all my years here. The only thing is now there's a mute button, but the policy is the same whether you come to the podium or whether uh, you're on the other side of the screen. Um, on the ordinance, um, I, it, we were on a handicapped parking ordinance uh, when Mr. Conceso said that your hand was up. Um, and I think you just said you were not speaking on the handicapped parking ordinance. You wanted to speak on the marijuana ordinance, but there was no public hearing on the marijuana ordinance at the last meeting. The public hearing was today. Uh, so we engage, we, speakers have 10 minutes um, where there's factual questions. Uh, we engage in a back and forth. Um, you know, department heads, myself, uh, sometimes council members. Um, however, we don't have to engage in that back and forth, um, especially in my view, I don't engage. And I've done this going back to year one with uh, a, a resident in the town of Kearney. Um, you know, I don't engage in back and forth on political questions. I let the speaker have as long as he or she wants uh, 10 minutes. Uh, and when they're done, uh, then I'll respond. Uh, and I ask you if you're done at the last meeting. Um, after a political question, you said yes. I didn't uh, so that, that, that was it. Now, if you wanted to I said, keep I going for 10 minutes, my question. that's fine. At no time I've ever gone to a, a, a council meeting in Kearney have I I've been asked Am I, uh, I, I, am I done? I, I expect it to be brought back. If you want to mute me while you're no, no, so what I said is I would answer the question at the end of when you were done. And so you said you wanted an answer now. And I said, are you done? And you said, yeah. So, so then that's why it happened. If, if you wanted, if you wanted to make a statement and you wanted to go, the, if you wanted to make a statement, you wanted to go the full 10 minutes. That's fine, but if if you're going to come forward with a politicized question, a politicized um, question. I, I, I don't have to engage. I don't have to engage. Like I said, from year Am one, I, I right engage now? in the political. I will engage as I did with you today. Right I will engage in the fat back and Am forth right now? unanswered Am questions. Am I muted right now? No. no. Are you, Are you not? Heard, you know? 
Um, I, it was not a political question. It was a fair question about something that, that, that is important to the town of Corning. It's not political. I had no- uh, we, uh, Your question was whether or not Mr. Mankin and a apology. It was not that was a politicized question, Mr. Pinot. You may, you may so you may, you, and, you're, and you're free to state it at the microphone. And I'm free to respond after you've concluded. You said you just said you don't respond to political questions, but you 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 went on and responded I, to it. I don't and I don't respond to engage in a political debate, but I will defend myself. Well, but you muted me and didn't let me come back and forth with you. So that 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 is so that tell me, tell me, you have you have, I think, an additional four minutes, maybe five. The Pat will uh, the clerk will verify that. If you wish to make further political statements, you may. Okay. Well, uh, today there was a a, a uh, news article with respect to NJSCA uh, suing their insurance company for monies that they, for business, basically business interruption, I, from what I could tell from the article. Um, um, and and it just shows the, uh, how lucky Corny got with, um, NJACA actually, after negotiations um, uh, broke down uh, on renewing the contract for N NJCA to continue operation to Keegan Landfill, that NJ NJCA uh, pulled out the the eminent domain card and played it, and the the, the court found in favor of NJCA that they could take the property. Uh, rather than Carney keep it. The town fought that. The town fought, they wanted to keep the Keegan landfill. And thank God the judge decided against Carney and uh, gave the property to NJSEA. Otherwise, we would be facing, Carney would be facing, you know, the, the $23 million uh, or, or the, the capping of the landfill and using that money, the $30 million that they have in escrow that I've asked at the board meeting and they said they have that money in escrow. So their NJSA is having some financial difficulties because the American Dream Mall, they're now have loss of revenue from dumping in Keegan, which we all knew was the reason why they wanted to keep the landfill. But thank God they, they, that the judge ruled against Carney even though we were fighting to keep the landfill. So that's one point. And one of the things in that decision that struck out to me was it said, according to the NJSCA, uh, Carney's mayor indicated that an extension was acceptable so long as Carney received adequate financial compensation. And that, that troubled me because the judge in that opinion was saying that town was negotiating to get additional money. And if they had settled on it, the NJSCA would have never done eminent domain and we would have been uh, the owner of the landfill and responsible for the capping and all of that that's going on now. So that's uh, sometimes you, uh, you know, just saying amounts que don't prevail in Portuguese, which means there are bad things that happen to you that are actually good for you. Well, it was a good thing we lost that case. Um, and also I just want to note that I had not that was not a planned question last last meeting. It was came out of the back and forth with council, former Councilman Mangan, brought me back to 15 years, 20 years ago, when that type of thing happened at the council meeting. I don't think it's not productive. I think that that's a good thing. I think it's good that council people uh, express their opinions, look at things, ask questions. Uh, it's nice that everybody gets along I and mean, we got to be professional and courteous, but I do think everyone should ask questions. I don't think Councilman, former Councilman Mangan was trying to do anything at that meeting beyond trying to figure out what the surplus was. And I listened to it again. And do we know now what the surplus for 2020 was? Yes, we stated at the last meeting and that information was correct. 12, 11.9 or $12 million surplus? No, I, I said the, I read the statement from the Moody's report and I'm gonna go back to your two earlier points on the landfill and uh, and uh, what was said 
uh, in 2004 and 2005 about uh, the Keegan landfill, uh, as well as the more recent history on the eminent domain. But on, on that particular point, what I said and what I read from the report was taken directly out of the Moody's report. I know, but is um, Moody's, that statement, is Moody's that statement the is actual accurate. number? I'm not asking what Moody said. I'm asking, is the number 11? It doesn't really matter. And it's just like, it's, I don't understand why you, you're so um, so adamant on this. What is the number, the sur actual surplus, 11.9? Do we have 11.9 million or $12 million based sure, on Sure, sure. Can I answer, Mr. Pinion? Or do we have 16? So, so I, I did state the actual number. So, um, so maybe it, if it's restated by the town auditor, that would help you understand it. So there is a number there, uh, Dennis, if you could unmute 973-809-1081. Um, can you unmute him? Okay. Uh, yes. He has the ability to unmute. I think I'm unmuted. Yes. Yes, you are. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hi, Steve, how are you? Hi, Steve. Good. Um, so the answer to the question is the December 31, 2020 fund balance of the town of Kearney is $12,577,634.63. Now, Steve, explain the number, the preliminary numbers provided by Moody's for 2020 in their report. Okay, so... In, on page three of their of their report, they reference um, unordered 2020 numbers show that other revenue took a hit. However, the reported fund balance figure in parentheses before Moody's adjustments more than doubled to $12.4 million, while the adjusted fund balance figure increased to $16.1 million. There's a clear difference between what our fund balance is, 12.4, 12.5, and how the rating agency makes certain adjustments to put new, especially New Jersey municipalities on par with the rest of the country because New Jersey is the only state that doesn't use generally accepted accounting principles for financial statements. New Jersey has a more conservative cash basis of accounting so in order to level the playing field for New Jersey communities, there are certain adjustments they make based on the base of accounting. And in their view, based on that, their adjustments, they view the surplus or the fund balance at December 31, 2020, not at 12.4 million, but at 16.1 million. All right, so- And that was the number used by Citibank that purchased the debt. Correct at at uh, you know one point six percent or whatever it was. Yes. So so when former Councilman Mangan said he'd be surprised or he'd be thought it would be really wonderful if it was sixteen point one or sixteen million dollars versus twelve million dollars, then he was right. It's it's actually twelve point four million dollars we have in surplus, and we're arguing over four million dollars that it the Moody's said it was sixteen. So the impression I got as I'm, I'm listening to it and I listened to it a couple of times was that the mayor was saying it was 16. Mr. Magan was saying that it was, should be 12 or, or it wasn't 16. Uh, so the, the clarification here is that on, on the way New Jersey does the accounting, it's 12.4 and Moody's somehow uh, does a different calculation, takes 12.4 and makes it 16.1, correct? Correct. That's part of that's part of it, John. I think Mr. Mangan went much beyond that. He had a lower number for 19 than we have, and uh, and then he made the allegation that it wasn't a real surplus. That it was a he actually used one time gimmick. So I think, that, or maybe not gimmick. He did use one timer, uh, in, in his. I'd have to get the exact wording. So he did go beyond that, John. All right. I I don't I don't think he went beyond. It. I think he was just saying he didn't want. Uh, using four million dollars, if you couldn't, you know, refund it, re refurb it. Right, and, and if you recall, my response was is that we we're generating more than we were using. Right, and therefore, and therefore, the fund balance has gone up, and I stated twice that it had gone up over two hundred percent in five years surplus, 
And that's when the, uh, the accusation was made that it was not real. Um, so he went well beyond 12 versus 16. I didn't, I didn't listen. I didn't hear it that way. All I heard was that it's, it's, it's recorded. It's, it's, it's available on the website. I know. I've listened to it a couple of times. Um, I didn't, I might, it's not my impression. I didn't think he was, he was trying to do anything, but he was surprised at the 16 million. And in fact, it's not really 16 million, it's 12.4, which is a good number in itself. So, um, all right. So uh, I guess my time should be up. Um, thank you. Okay, so I, if, if Madam Clerk, I wanna use my time to, to respond. Just restating the history of the Keegan Landfill, it is on the website. Our lease agreement with the Sports Authority expired June 30th, 2016. Uh, in May, uh, we sent uh, a vacate, uh, vacate notice to the NJSEA saying uh, we didn't want them uh, to renew. Uh, we didn't want them to continue. Uh, and we did so because we didn't think we were going to get our end use, which is recreational fields. The hydrogen sulfide um, uh, high readings uh, had not yet begun in 2016. Right. Uh, so we and we had a clear lease that expired uh, June 30th, 2016. Uh, we gave, uh, we wanted to be extra sure. So, you know, you're a tenant of ours, you vacate the tenant. Uh, we sent the extra notice, leave by uh, June 30th. Uh, and then they filed an eminent domain action. Uh, that's a taking of private, of, of taking of another's pri uh, property. Usually it's in the private property context, but there is eminent domain of government against government. And the higher government can take property from a lower government. But the analysis is the same. Uh, it's the same analysis under the Fifth Amendment and the 14th Amendment of the Constitution. In order to take someone's property, you need to fulfill two requirements. One, you need to have a public purpose. And then two, and you don't get to two unless you satisfy number one. And then two, you have to pay just compensation. That's the terminology used in the Constitution, just compensation. The courts have interpreted that to mean fair market value. So both those prongs have to be met in order to have a legitimate eminent domain action, a legitimate taking. We challenged the public purpose prong. We said that Sports Authority did not have a legitimate public purpose to take this property. And for the very reason which they're, which you stated, Mr. Pinion, which they're now admitting in their business interruption lawsuit against their insurance carrier, is that this really was a business undertaking for them so they could pay their costs. And that's not a legitimate public purpose. That's not what government should be taking property for. We lost that argument because they came up, they really went for the bleachers and they said, well, Keegan was used during Superstorm Sandy. If we didn't have Keegan during Superstorm Sandy, where would all of this debris go? And the court accepted that. And we challenged that argument all the way to the New Jersey Supreme Court. And we lost, the court accepted it. That is a legitimate public purpose. First prong is satisfied. You now go to second prong. Well, we and we even filed a writ of certiorari in the Supreme Court of the United States, which would be one more court we can go to even after the New Jersey Supreme Court. Court Supreme Court didn't take sir. So we lost the, the battle on public purpose. So now we're left with the second component, just compensation. It's our duty as elected officials of the town of Kearney at that point to maximize the amount of money that we're gonna receive for the taxpayer when we can't stop the taking. We're not gonna roll over. So we fought, we fought the just compensation component. Um, and we weren't satisfied with the number that, and we appealed that all the way through the process. We weren't satisfied with the final number, but it was our duty to maximize just compensation for the Carney taxpayers once the taking could not be stopped. And we did that. Now, the final point I want to make, and, and this really, and I, I mean, it, a lot happens, and you try to, you know, try to remember what happened, and and uh, 
that green space initiative. We were promised so many different things and, um, and we were promised a proper closing of the landfill, the slurry wall, so the leachate of, you know, 65 million gallons going into a polluted, going in, a polluted uh, waste leachate going into the marsh and harming uh, the, the water bodies and, and, and just the uncovered waste and the huge liability for the reasons that Mr. Pino stated, the huge liability that was in a, in a way that sports authority taken title, but also our legal settlement with them after we sued them protected the Carney taxpayer. But I really try to remember what, who said what in 2004 and 2005. So I pulled the minutes of all the meetings from 2004 and 2005. I couldn't find, not while he was still councilman, Mr. Mangan, or the year after when he was not councilman and we had hearings on the ordinances and public presentations, you know, and it, it's minutes. So is it possible, they're not verbatim. Is it possible he spoke and it wasn't recorded or, or noted? It's possible, but I couldn't find one comment for Mr. Mangan opposing the landfill proposal at that point, uh, either 04 or 05, as councilman or after councilman when, when the action was taken. Uh, I mean, he certainly is familiar with the process. So uh, unless it was missed in the, mi in the minutes, but I, you know, as a former councilman, I, I, I would think the minutes would have reflected that. Um, and, but I did find a comment for Mr. Pino, but it was about the revenue and how much we're getting and whether we should be getting more. It wasn't that this is a bad deal because, you know, garbage is, going to be used as as a cap um, that that was not in the record so um, you know at least in the municipal proceedings whether it's the pre presentations are made on it in 2004 uh, to the entire council uh, as well as the you know the 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 votes that actually took place the following year um, you know I've searched the minutes um, and sort of, you know, I, I've done my diligence, diligence and, um, you know, I don't think, and I've looked at all the comments that were made at the time again to think, to, to, to see if, if any of the analysis um, should have been different. And I didn't see anything in the record suggesting otherwise. Um, so I think that history of 05 and then 016 when we told them to leave, and then when we fought the eminent domain public prong, and then when we fought the eminent domain just compensation component, and then when we filed the lawsuit uh, uh, on hydrogen sulfide that ultimately was successful, and that ultimately uh, confirmed the liability on the sports authority on post-closure, which was still unclear at that point. Um, and now the DEP saying there has to be a full membrane uh, impermeable liner. I think, I think the history shows that each step of the way, the council and I uh, fought for the best interests of our community. Next speaker, Madam Clerk. I, I can't hear you, Madam Clerk. Lexi is our next speaker. And I've unmuted her. Um, She's I think she just left her hand up and doesn't know that it's still up. Uh, yeah, I'm still not getting any communication. Why don't you lower all hands and see if the hand comes back up? Yeah, uh, okay. Uh, Mayor, her, her mic is on. It just is not. But, yeah, it's just, lower all, just lower all hands and see if she comes back up. Then we know there's a, there's a microphone issue on her side. So lower all hands and see if she re-raises her hand. All right, so I lowered her hands and we'll see, but we do have John Pino, his hand is well, he, raised he spoke, again. He, he spoke 10 minutes already, Madam Clark. All right, so then therefore no other hands are raised. Okay, we'll proceed with ordinances for introduction. Okay, I'm just gonna turn this back to Dennis. Okay, uh, for introduction, uh, Ordinance 018, I move that we introduce that. Second. Second. Is there a second? Second. Second. Seconded by Facito. All in favor say aye. 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 Ordinance is introduced. And I move aye. on 019, we introduce that ordinance. Second. Seconded by Facito. All in favor say aye. 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 
ordinance is introduced. And on 020, I move that we introduce that ordinance. Second. Seconded by Echo. All in favor say aye. 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 Ordinance is introduced. And on 021, I move that we introduce that ordinance. Second. Seconded by Doyle. All in favor say aye. 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 Ordinance is introduced. And on second reading, I move we open the public hearing on 017. Second. Seconded by Cardozo. All in favor say aye. 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 This is the time fix for public hearing on this ordinance, which has been advertised for this time. It's entitled Ordinance Prohibiting the Operation of Cannabis Businesses Within the Town of Kearney. The only subject matter that may be discussed during this portion is this ordinance. Are there speakers, Madam Clerk? Uh, John Pino's hand is raised. Mr. Pino on 017. He's muted. Uh, unmute yourself, John. I'm sorry. Okay, I had my hand up because I wanted to comment on a um, statement made about the meetings. So we're on 017 now, Mr. Pino. Do you have comments on that? I don't have comments on 017. I do have a comment on your statement. No, that's the, what the hearing is for. So next speaker, Madam Clerk. Um, I see no other speakers. Thank you. Uh, motion to close the hearing. Second. Seconded by Facita. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Hearing is closed. And I move that we adopt. Oh, uh, 17. Second. 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 Seconded by Echo. All in favor, say aye. 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 Those are not voting. The ordinance is adopted. I'll review the resolutions that are currently not. It's, uh, is the, let's start with the bill list. Is that's not on the consent agenda. It will remain off the consent agenda. Thank you. So let me review the other items not on the consent agenda. 227, 228. There's no 229, 230, 231, 232. Uh, Councilwoman Doyle on the consent agenda. I'd like to amend the consent agenda resolution 226 to include all those items with the exception of the bill list and 229. I'll second the amendment to the consent agenda. Is there discussion on the amended consent agenda? Roll call. Council Member Doyle? Yes. Uh, McCurry? Yes. Echo? Yes. Cardozo? Yes. Tanaka? Yes. DeCastro? Yes. Santana? Yes. Facito? Yes. And Mayor Santos. Yes. Councilman Doyle, resolution 219. I'd like to move resolution 219. It's the bill list resolution. Second. Is there a second? Seconded by Cardozo. Roll call. Council members Doyle. Yes. McCurry. Not voting. Echo. Yes. Cardozo. Yes. Tanaka. Yes. DeCastro. Yes. Santana? Yes. Pasito? Yes. And Mayor Santos? Yes. That concludes the items of business on today's agenda. Unless there are any additional co comments from council members, I will entertain a motion to adjourn this meeting. I'll second that. I guess I made the motion. It was seconded by <laughs> council members. Uh, and uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Not voting. This meeting is adjourned. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. 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 Good